And let's go ahead and bring in some XD cam footage here. I'll just grab a couple of clips here because I want to show you how you can mix and match formats pretty easy. And we'll let that import. And let's go ahead and grab some P2. And I'll go down to my P2 folder here. And again, this is just remembering the last places that I've been. So nothing particularly fancy about that. And I'll grab some P2. One of the things I can do right inside of Premiere Pro CS4 now is go ahead and create a new sequence. It's almost like creating a new project and tell it now, well, I don't want to do AVC HD. This is actually XD Cam. And I want to go ahead and choose full quality. Now, to keep it simple for me, I'm going to go ahead and name my sequence. Um, again, I like to name it after my camera, but I'll just say uh, XD Cam EX. That's great, and I'm gonna go ahead and just take this XDCAM folder now and drag it down on the timeline, and you see now I've got XDCAM. This is tremendous, so let's go ahead and create another sequence. And this time I'm gonna to go to my DVC Pro HD and let's create a P2. Grab my P2 folder and drag and drop it right down on the timeline. Now, one of the things I like to point out is if I'm going to be mixing and matching footage, uh, I might not want to have to deal with all of this, uh, the separate waveform um, down here. You'll notice that uh, these are all mono tracks down here. So let me just undo that. I can go down here and click on my P2 folder, go to clip audio options, source channel mappings, and go ahead and turn those into stereo and just leave those on channels one and two. Now when I drag these down, uh, you're gonna notice that uh, they're now on the stereo pair uh, down here at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete these tracks uh, that are here, all the audio tracks that are empty. So now it makes it look pretty much like the other clips. If I go back over to P2, XD Cam, or even AVC HD, you see all the footage basically looks the same. I can edit this information as native P2 and deal with all the things that I want to deal with in a P2 uh, project before bringing that into another project. So same thing with XD Cam. When I'm done editing all those, again, this is just one particular workflow. You can mix and match these in the same timeline if you'd like. I'll go ahead and just, uh, let's just use uh, XD Cam. So I'm going to call this Mixed Formats. So more or less my master timeline. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and grab that Canon footage. Let's go ahead and grab the XD cam, put it right there. I'll just go ahead and grab my P2 and put it right down on the timeline. And what you're going to see is I've got my AVC HD, I've got my XD cam, XD cam and I've got my P2. Now the P2 is gonna redline here because again, the P2 is a different aspect ratio and a different size, right? P2 in this particular case is 1280 by 1080, 1 1.5 aspect ratio. You can actually check some of that when you go down in, into your properties panel and look at that particular clip. It's gonna tell you uh, the size of that under the, under the properties. You can also dig in and click on the clip here and get more information um, about that particular clip to find out what's going on with the property. Same as we've had, uh, had before, um, pretty slick. So under my mixed formats, um, I'm able to, uh, to go in and deal with this now as one project. Each one of these sequences uh, acts like a clip inside of this timeline or this sequence. So again, this is nothing particularly new. This is just nested sequences. But just to point out, it's sort of a different new workflow for a lot of people being able to deal with AVC HD over here. Maybe you've got an HDV camera and you're trying to shoot everything in the same size. Um, you know, you may be using that 1.3 three aspect ratio and then you can sort of choose a master format um, to work in and we're going to get back to that in just a minute okay 
Now, what can I do with this once I have all these formats together? Uh, well, there's a couple things we can do. Let's let's look at this uh, XD cam footage for a second here, and let's just try to find. Um, let's go down to this particular guy here. I'm going to take these three clips, and I want to bring them into After Effects. So the new way we do this in CS4 is to right mouse click and now say replace with After Effects composition. After Effects comes back, we're going to go ahead and just name this CS4 Demo. And it's going to import those uh, clips directly inside of After Effects. Now, this is really neat because Dynamic Link actually went from Premiere over to After Effects from the timeline. I think that's critical to realize. Let's just go ahead and put an effect on this just to keep it easy. And I'll just throw some rain on our little seagull there and make him rain. So you guys can sort of see that. Let me bring the rain up a little bit so you can sort of see what's going on there. It's raining on our little friend there. And I'm going to go ahead and just add some more rain to these other scenes here so we can sort of see what's up and bring up some of this drop size a little bit. There we go. So now, now we sort of got this uh, rain effect going on. And as soon as I go back over here into Premiere, Premiere is going to update and you're going to see that... Uh, that rain effect there. So again, this is uh, this is a pretty huge feature to be able to send things to After Effects. It would work great for a green screen, by the way. You can take your green screen, click on it, send it to After Effects, do key light, that sort of stuff. There isn't any more of having to file dynamic link and do all the settings that we used to have to do or drag from project bin to project bin as we had in CS3. This is just direct from the timeline, a great use of Premiere Pro. Now, a couple other things that I, that I want to point out, which I think are, uh, are pretty huge. Let's go back to my mixed timelines and start talking about finishing this project up. Premiere now supports uh, Send to Encore, so we're going to go File, Adobe Dynamic Link, Send to Encore. Call this CS4 Demo. And I'll leave it as Blu-ray, um, 1920, 1080s, fine. So you're going to notice that my timeline is right here, mixed formats. I can double click on my, uh, on my timeline here. My timeline will appear down here at the bottom. And I can go ahead and play this out. So there's my AVC HD clip playing. Let's see, we skip a little bit further. Okay, there's the rain right from After Effects. And if I skip down here, you'll see here's my... Here's my P2 stuff. So it's actually playing fairly decent. If I come back here, there's my XD cam. Here's my P2 back over here. Here's my ABC HD. So very impressive that I can actually do all the things I need to do inside of Encore now. And I did not have to render outside of Premiere Pro. So let's go back in Premiere for a second and talk about things we might want to do to change this. I can go ahead at this point, I'm going to make this a little larger here. Let's go ahead and just grab um, a quick clips here. And just to show you, I'm going to go ahead and just make the timeline longer. Now this is obviously going to have an effect on uh, Encore because now the timeline is actually physically changed. And it's going to do a couple other things. I'm going to go to new title, And now I've got my title. Now I can choose to put the title over top of here. I could actually dig in if I wanted to down a couple of le uh, levels here. Let me just throw it down here on top of this AVC HD. And I'll dig this in a little bit. And I'll just sort of stretch this out so we can find it. And if I go back to my mixed formats, of course, you see there's my, there's my title. That looks fine. And if I go 